were a, a problem that didn't make sense to me a while ago, but now when I revisit it, it's actually quite straightforward. And I think it's a pretty common sort of technical problem that, that people like to ask about, um, the coin change problem. And there are a variety of ways to solve this, but as I was looking at the Roman numeral problem again in the context of, of taking a course on refactoring in Python, it occurred to me that it was the same problem. We just didn't have a use of uh, a set of symbols to analyze. So really what it is, you have a bunch of coins, we'll write that out, you have some change you need to make and you want to do so, minimizing the number of pieces. And, and this just means you essentially want to dispense the change how you would if you were a cashier. So you're not going to give somebody 117 pennies, you would give them a dollar, a dime, a nickel, and two pennies. So, and again, that's a greedy algorithm. Greedy just means that at every step of the way, it just looks for a locally optimal solution, meaning it, it doesn't really consider the rest of the problem, it just considers what can I do at this moment. And when we write it out, you'll actually see um, what that means. We're solving various little sub-problems without regard for the entire problem. We just pass the rest of the problem back to the function for it to solve once again. So we're gonna do this recursively. So when you say pass it back to the function to solve once again, that implies recursion. So uh, let's make our coins at least. So we have coins, that's gonna be, we got pennies, we have nickels, dimes, quarters, no 50 cent pieces, and we're gonna to go to uh, the dollar, the $5, and you know, we're not gonna make, we're gonna make change for like maybe, um, like 433 or something. So we're not gonna to need to go past five. Why would we give somebody a five when we only need to give them $4? So that already tells you some of the reasoning behind solving this problem. If, if we need to make 433, um, you know, we kind of want to start by saying is one less than that number, yes. Is five cents less than that number, yes. Is a dime less than that, yes. Is a quarter less than that. Is a dollar less than that. Is five dot, no. So that's actually a value we need to keep track of. So, you know, for the most part, just make a function out of it. So we're gonna say coin change or maybe just return change. And what it's gonna do, uh, an amount to return. So we're gonna have to return an amount like $4.33. And we're gonna have, we're gonna have our coins. So, you know, I'll just add the coins to the, uh, to the function as default there. And basically what we're gonna do is we need to go over all the coins and two things can happen, right? Let's say that somebody wants 25 cents back. So if we find that we need to return 25 cents and we have a coin for 25 cents, we just wanna return that, right? So that's actually the simple case. And the other thing we need to do is if, if the coin, as we go through all of our coins, and I specifically sorted them from low to high, as you'll see, that's very important. If uh, we see that the coin is less than the amount, we want to keep track of that coin, but only while it's less than that amount. Like if we're returning 430 and we finally get to five, we want to remember that the maximum was one. That was the locally optimal solution at that point in time. So really what we're going to do is first we'll handle the really simple case. So for C and coins, if C is equal to the, uh, the value we need to return, well, return C. And what I'm just gonna do is put that on that line there and make it a little shorter to read. Now the other thing, so if C is less than the amount that we need to return, then we need to set something that monitors the value of C. So what you can kind of do here, what I like to do to keep track of some kind of other value that gets set within a loop, maybe you could say like flag, and I'll set it to none up here. 
So if the, the value of the coin as we iterate over all the coins is less than the value that we need to return, and keep in mind, we're not gonna break out of this loop for C in coins, we're just gonna conditionally set a value. We're gonna set it on that condition. We're gonna set the flag equal to the coin. So now let's step out of this loop. So after, let's say we're, we're talking about it, we're using $4.33. Flag is none for C in coins. The first condition doesn't matter. We don't have a coin that's worth $4.33. Now let's check out this condition. If C is less than two return, flag is C. So let's just return the flag for now and see what that really, what that really does. So return change and try to figure out what that's gonna return. That's gonna return a one because it was the highest amount that we could start grabbing to make change for $4.33. So after we get a dollar, we need to say to ourselves, well, what's left, right? We have a balance, right? So I'm gonna create a variable called just, you know, temp balance. And that's gonna be a function of our original value to return minus the flagged value. And I'm gonna round that just to the second, just so we keep it, keep it consistent. So now let's just return the temp balance. So the temp balance, that should give us 433 minus one, which is gonna be 333, okay? So now really all we need to do is we need to say, okay, how much do I have to return? Well. I have to return 333. It just so happens that to solve the next uh, you know, unit of money I need to get, I just have to call this function again. The coins don't change. We're not gonna have a restriction where we only have two quarters and one dollar. So, And you could, you could keep track of a global variable called number of pennies and number of nickels. And you could write some code in here to, to decrement the, the count of those. and and change coins uh, that you have, and that should handle that, but we need to basically call return change on the temporary balance. Now, this is the part of recursion that's a little bit tricky because you have to think about as the, uh, as the recursive return value continues to kind of pile up, what are you doing? Are you adding a big string together? Are you adding a series of integers together? Are you adding, you know, what, what are you adding? So let's just do it the stupid way. So let's just return temp balance plus return change temp balance. And that's not gonna do anything. So really we're trying to return coins and the flag was set to the coin. So let's just try that. It's not gonna work, but let's at least see what, what error arises. Right. So. 433 so it did return the flag which was one and then it kept you know so it, it did return the money we needed but we didn't see what coins we wanted so the way i kind of ultimately dealt with this was i wanted to return everything in a list like a list with a 0.01 a list with a one a list with a, a nickel or whatever so what you can do here is instead of returning the value and adding integers, because keep in mind we're returning the flag plus the next version of the function call, let's return the flag, which is the, the local optimal coin to return. And in Python, you can just put something in a list and it'll be a list or an iterable of one element. And then you can also do the same for that. So if we do that, it should return this nested sort of thing. So, and this kind of highlights what the recursion is actually doing. So at first, you know, it, it's a one, then it's a one, then it's a one, then it's a one. And then it says, okay, now after that, I just need to return 33 cents. So it goes through, it says, is a, is a penny less than 33? Okay, is a nickel less than 33? Okay. Is a quarter less than 33? Okay. Is a one less than 33? No. Oh, so flag is at 25 cents. Let's do 25 cents. Now, what do we need to return? Well, we need to return 33 minus 25, which is now eight. Okay. Is one penny less than eight cents? Yes. Is five cents 
is uh, you know five cents less than eight cents yes is ten cents less than eight cents no okay so we need to do a five now we need to do uh, eight minus five which is three and it continues to go through and it realizes that we need uh, another set of three pennies so in this case it's actually cool we do see all the coins uh, the interesting thing here is it returns a you know a highly uh, nested iterable and that's cool because it actually does help you see what the recursion is doing like if you grab one right right so you have two levels to it so we need to take out we need to kind of flatten this and I there are a lot of ways to flatten arbitrarily nested lists in Python but I thought I would um, I picked up on this solution in Stack Overflow and I, I liked it because it was interesting it wasn't like a common a common solution and let's step through it so just a function that's gonna flatten a uh, let's just make a uh, you know result equals that we'll look at the result and the interesting thing here is flatten it, it's figuring out whether to call itself recursively or not based on a try except block so essentially for item in L which is the iterable try to yield from flatten the item and basically if you're calling for item in something if it's not an iterable it will raise a type error meaning it's just an item already right so if I say for item in 4.55 yield item or just whatever print item float object is not iterable and see how it's raising a type error so that's actually kind of neat so let's call it on let's actually enter it and flatten the result and it returns a generator and in order to exhaust the generator you can iterate over it or you can just call you know make a list out of it and that returns a nice flattened list of four dollars a quarter a nickel so on and so forth and obviously if you sum that you should assert that um, that is equal to 433 and that's interesting what is the sum aha so you have a bit of round off error here so you need to say round and that's the problem with with uh, languages like this sometimes depending on the type of math that you're doing it may not be precisely equal so you may have to call around but yeah so that that's relatively simple it the recursive solution works in the exact same way that a cashier is actually gonna count up change that they need to dispense and then this was a nice recursive solution that basically relies on the behavior of the object to discern whether or not you're nesting at the level of another list or you're nesting at the level of an actual item. So try to think about that. That's pretty cool. So all right, hopefully that helps somebody out there in the universe and uh, have a good day.